Um, problem one is a very straightforward problem. In problem one, they asked us to uh, write a static method that will take a array and total up the values. So in other words, I've got 1, 3, 2, 7, and 3, and when we add all those up, we should get 16. So we're going to have to go through this array and accumulate the values. So very straightforward, no problems with that. Let's go ahead and talk about how we would write this. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this, and, and I want to do it both ways just because I think it's important. Um, so I'm definitely going to need some type of accumulator which I'll call total, and I'll go ahead and set that to zero. And then I'm going to have to remember to return total when I'm done. So in between here, I need to make sure that I access all the elements of the array. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. Uh, the easiest way, the most straightforward way, is to set up a loop. So int i gets zero, i is less than array dot length, i plus plus and just say that total gets total plus and then whatever's in box i of our array. So that's our very straightforward array sum. We've probably written half a dozen methods like this in our class to go through uh, and add stuff. And we're probably looking at one point for coming up with an accumulator variable and successfully returning it and then one point for this loop here. But there's another way that we could write this, and so I'm going to talk about that. Again, I still need an accumulator variable, so int total gets zero, and return total. But I could use a for each loop in here. I could do for, and I could say int i in array, and then I could just say total plus gets i. And it does the exact same thing. It kind of does it the exact same way. Uh, it's just a little bit shorter code. And of course, we're probably still looking at the same one point for our accumulator variable and one point for successfully going through all the items in our loop. So very straightforward, very simple method we have to do. Nice start to our AP exam. So we'll go ahead and clean this up and move on to part B. So on part B, now we have a method called row sums that's going to add up each row in our two-dimensional array and we're going to return these as an array of sums and what's going to be very important is the fact that we have to use the method that we just wrote now we just wrote this array sum method down here we're going to have to use that so the idea here is that i should be able to go through each row of this array and add up the elements in order to determine it. So the first row is going to add up to 16, second row adds up to 32, third row adds up to 28, and so forth. So that's what we're doing in this next method. So, and what's really important is that it tells me that I must use array sum to receive full credit. So they don't want us reinventing the wheel. We can assume that our array sum works no matter what we wrote in the previous problem. So what I need to do here is because I'm going to be returning an int array, I need to declare an int array. So I'm going to call this totals, and this is going to be a new int array, and I want the size to be equal to the rows that we had in our array 2D. So it's going to be array 2D dot length. So that's going to set up our totals, and then we're going to make sure we return totals when we're done with this. In the meantime, we're going to have to go through each row of our matrix, each row of our two-dimensional array, and total up those items. So in this case, I can't use a for each loop. And the reason is because I need to put a, something in a very specific box of the array that we just created. So I need to actually iterate through the array. I need to do a regular for loop. So int i gets 0, i is less than totals.size, uh, excuse me, dot length, and i++. Plus plus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say total in box i is going to get and remember, I'm required to use array sum. So array sum for the row that we're looking at, which is array 2D 
box i. Now I can't use an iterated loop, I mean I have to use an iterated loop, I can't use a for each loop because although I could get the ith row, I wouldn't know which element of the matrix I could do. I mean technically I could say, you know, int spot get zero and then use a for each loop and here I would say int array row in R2D and then here I would say totals sub spot is going to get array sum for the row and then I would have to say spot plus plus. I'd have to do that in the context of this for each loop. So I could use a for each loop here but it adds a little bit more hardware because not only do we have the for each loop but we also have to keep track of which spot we're going to put it in and keep accumulating it as necessary. And a regular iterated for loop I think does that much better. So this method here is probably the better one to use and this one here is okay but I I think it's a lot more overhead just to force us to use a for each loop. Um, looking at the points on this, I'm guessing that we're going to have one point for declaring a value that we're going to return, declaring this array, making up sure of course that it's the correct size. Uh, one point for making sure that we successfully call on uh, the array sum, and then one point for making sure that we call all the array sums as needed. So one point probably for a successful call and a successful, a successful assignment and one point for going through and actually putting it in. So three points probably uh, for part B. And again, I would not do this uh, for each loop, although you can do it. I, I really think it's more trouble than it's worth. Uh, definitely in part A, the for each loop is going to help out, but in part B, uh, not so much. So now we're going to scroll down to C. So the idea with C is that we want to know if a particular array is diverse. And an array is diverse if no two rows have the same elements. Notice here, none of these rows have the same elements, so we would say that this is a diverse uh, matrix. But here, two of the rows have the same size, and so we would say this is not uh, diverse. And so we've, we're going to be keeping track of truth or falsehood in here. And we're going to have to go through each row. So we're going to be calling on the methods that we've written so far. So we need to make sure that we actually call on uh, row sums in order to get this to work. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go through and not only find all the row sums, but we're also going to need to go through and make sure that none of the values actually match. So, I'm going to start by declaring a Boolean variable, a Boolean variable which I'll call uh, is diverse, and I'm going to assign it true, because we're going to assume it's true unless we find a counterexample, unless we find a pair that works. And then we're going to have to go through and get our uh, row sum. So I'm going to have int array totals gets uh, row sums for uh, Ray 2D. And then I want to go through this loop, but keep in mind I need to check box 0 with every box. I'm going to need to check box 1 with every box. I'm going to need to check box 2 with every box. So a nested loop is probably going to be best for us. So I'm going to say 4 int i gets 0. i is less than uh, array to d dot length i plus plus but keep in mind that row 0 and row 0 should have the same value so I'm going to in my next iteration here for my next loop I'm gonna say j gets i plus 1 and then j has to be less than array to d dot length and j plus plus so now what I'm going to do is check total sub i and total sub j and make sure that they're distinct. If uh, totals sub i is equal to totals sub j, then I'm going to say is div gets false. In other words, I found my counterexample and that's the value that I'm going to return. No, no part of this loop is ever going to change it back to true. So after this nested loop, I'm going to go ahead and return 
is div. So that takes care of my issue here. Um, I'm starting by assuming it's true and of course this row here is optional. I don't have to declare this value. What I could do here is I could just say return false. Basically if I find something that doesn't work return false and then down here I could say or return true. Either one of those will work here. Uh, both of those are fine. Um, the question is, you know, do I, I personally like to, if I have to return an item, make sure that I declare an item and make sure I return that item. But because we're talking about Booleans, it's going to be very simple to just kind of stop what we're doing and return false at that particular point. And then just return true if we successfully make it through the nested loops. Because if we've made it through the nested loops, there's no repetitions. So looking at the points here, I'm looking at us probably getting one point for getting the row sums, getting the totals through that, and this would be the point that we would lose if we did not call row sums as directed. Um, we're going to have to, uh, we'll probably get a point if we return false if a collision happens, and a point if we return true if a collision doesn't happen, uh, as long as we have successfully gone through all of the elements. So I'm looking at a point for actually calling on row sums, a point for making sure that you successfully iterate through all the elements, a point for returning false if you don't succeed, and a point for returning true if everything works out beautifully. So four points on this. So for the breakdown on problem one, I'm looking at a two, three, four breakdown for the points on there. And again, I'm, I'm not an AP grader right now. I don't know what those points are going to be. All I know is what they have given points for in the past, and that's what I'm basing this prediction on. So that's question one, very straightforward dealing with arrays.